So as mentioned, we'll take a little look at patience in relationships. We are always in relationships, aren't we? <clears throat> Even if you live by yourself, work at home by yourself, you are in a very important relationship, that relationship with yourself. And in case you think you don't have a relationship with yourself, I would invite you to close your eyes again for about 30 seconds and notice who that is speaking to you. <laughs> so we'll take a look at some of the more general thoughts about patients and relationships and you should be able to then apply it to your specific relationships with either a significant other, a child, a parent, in the workplace, with the person who pushes you out of the way to get that cab when you've been waiting in the rain for 10 minutes. That's a relationship, isn't it? So this practice of meditation helps us learn about patience in relationships. Self-examination is essential if we want to bring greater joy and reverence to our relationships. Although the boss or the noisy neighbor can often try our patience, it is our relationships with those we care about most that can at times present the most challenging issues undoubtedly for the very reason that they are the relationships that matter most to us. This is where we are emotionally most heavily invested. Our long history with a parent, brother, sister, or other relative can be laden with offenses and misunderstandings. Our relationship with a significant other can be easily stressed as together we maneuver the choppy waters of the ocean of our days. Or if you prefer the less poetic, it means as we trudge, trudge through our life, doing all that stuff we have to do. And when it is with another person, with a partner, with a significant other, we are close and living <laughs> under the same roof, all the rough edges show. That's when the patience of both can be tried the most. Now we should go back and review a thought <clears throat> about patience to make sure that everyone has heard it and everyone understands it. We use this odd language with patience. We say, I'm not a patient person. I lost my patience. And that suggests that patience is some sort of a thing. I mean, in order to lose something, there has to be something to lose, right? Like, I can lose this book, which I hope not because it has all my markings in it, or we can lose any sort of thing. But patience isn't a thing. So therefore, this idea that we lose it is rather strange. Rather, under certain causes and conditions, we experience the arising of something else which we call impatience. Contingent factors come together and we experience a feeling. And we call that feeling impatience. It can replace a feeling of patience and therefore we can say Patience was lost in favor of the arising of impatience. But neither patience nor impatience actually exist until circumstances come together. So that there is reason for the arising of impatience or patience. To say, I am an impatient person, <laughs> really flies in the face of everything that science has been teaching us today. Because re research is showing that there isn't a fixed, solid entity that is me, 
I, Alan, Allison, Susanna, but rather a series of ongoing experiences, thoughts, feelings, sensations, which is all vibration. So everything is constantly changing. In one moment, I'm a very patient person. In another moment, I'm an impatient person. If I experience impatience more often than I would like, then I might want to do something about that. Frequent arising of impatience could indicate some level of unhappiness or fear. But it does not define character. It's simply the arising of certain experiences. Okay? And there will be a time for questions and your comments. <clears throat> so things constantly arise and fade away according to a complex matrix of causes and conditions. When we see this truth in relation to our impatience, we can become more willing to release views to which we may have been clinging for years. Even absolute, unquestionable fact has been known to become more obsolete than absolute. When in disagreement, it is simply wiser to listen with the grace of patience and use your intelligence to work out acceptable solutions. A big factor in dealing with impatience or patience has to do with how we communicate. No matter what the relationship is, we're communicating constantly. The first step to becoming a skillful listener is remembering that you care about the other. You may have to negotiate and you want to do so fairly. If you are always winning, the chances are you're losing. Listen, listen, listen. Don't keep explaining your point and expect your loved one to remain patient. Just like you, they want a fair chance. You start to get the idea that some of this just isn't rocket science. It's grounded in common sense. Now this is something written related to children, but as you listen to these three lines, realize how they can fit in your life as well. When we teach a child to be truthful, we offer them the gift of an ethical life. When we teach a child to take responsibility for their actions, we offer them the gift of an honorable life. When we teach a child patience, we offer them the gift of a dignified life. favorite lines, which I can say because I didn't write it. A Zen master advised, in times of disagreement, don't side with yourself. <laughs> to be mindful is to be aware of thoughts, feelings, and sensations in the body and mind, moment to moment, in an impartial, non-clinging way. The significance of the practice of mindfulness in Buddhist thought can be summed up in these words of the Buddha. This is the direct path for the purification of beings, for the overcoming of grief and sorrow, for the elimination of pain and distress. And if the word purification doesn't sit all that well, he's just really saying for awakening, for enlightenment, for freedom. The path is 
led through developing mindfulness to become more aware of what your inner landscape is about, what is going on within you, rather than always being focused on what is going on around you, realizing that you can't change everything that's going on around you, but you do have complete control of your perceptions of how you experience the world. If you wait for the other person to speak more skillfully, you may have a long wait. You can only control you. If the other person responds favorably to your kinder words, that's great. If not, then you get to practice patience. <laughs> when viewed from an egoless perspective, it is a win-win situation. And finally, each of these chapters, as most of you know, end with a contemplation or two and then an actual practice that you can use to work with some of the thoughts that have preceded. So this first contemplation, words of the Buddha, learn this from the flowing waters. Through mountain slits and gullies, the smallest streams gush loudly, but the great rivers flow silently. And this from the Native American Apache tradition. Treat yourselves and each other with respect and remind yourselves often of what brought you together. Give the highest priority to your tenderness gentleness and kindness that your connection deserves. When frustrations, hardships and fear assail your relationship as they threaten all relationships at one time or another, remember to focus on what is right between you, not what seems wrong. In this way you can ride out the storms when clouds hide the face of the sun in your lives, remembering that even if you lose sight of it, the sun is still there. And a little practice that you can use, especially as you sense a conversation warming up, shall we say? Honor your relationships by developing listening skills. When conversations are becoming heated, stop and ask the other person if you heard them correctly, and repeat the words you heard as accurately as you can. This creates a situation in which you must focus on what has actually been said and offers the other an opportunity to evaluate whether they actually said what they intended to say. It also slows down the dialogue, which can allow things to cool a bit. Now, when you repeat what the other person has said, remember that you are repeating the words that you heard, not your interpretation of those words. Let's sit with that for just a minute.